While Bluetooth is a wireless technology that brings convenience and connectivity to all our personal devices, it also exposes them to hackers to perform a range of malicious activities, and in this video, I'll walk you through what those activities are, and showcase some of the tools that hackers use to accomplish them, so let's get started. Nah, nah, don't try it. Disclaimer. This video solely focuses on the attacks carried out by hackers to compromise Bluetooth devices and does not provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to execute them. Black hat hacking is highly discouraged and can result in serious legal consequences. Stage number one, Bluetooth attacks. Okay so when we talk about hacking Bluetooth devices, there are some attacks which target a specific vulnerability in certain devices, and then there are some other ones, which are broadly applicable and target the basic features of Bluetooth technology. In this video, we'll only be focusing on the attacks that leverage these basic features and can be done on most devices, but if you're also interested in learning about the other ones like a blue bugging or a blue snarfing attack, I've prepared a PDF that you can download by clicking on the link in the description down below. It also includes some additional details about the practicality of some of the attacks that I'll go over here. Anyways coming back to the topic, the first broadly applicable attack on our list is called a Bluetooth DDoS attack. Similar to how a DDoS attack is done on a website, in a Bluetooth DDoS attack, an attacker basically positions themselves within the range of a targeted Bluetooth device, and then sends a bunch of connection requests or packets to that device, in order to make it dysfunctional, or prevent it from staying connected to another device. This is mainly done to annoy someone or disrupt industrial activities, and can only be executed if the target device is not configured to limit the rate of connection requests. Moving on we have the bias or a Bluetooth impersonation attack. Judging by its name, in this type of attack, an attacker basically spoofs their device to mimic the one that the target device has previously connected to, and then poses as their trusted device, in order to establish a connection. Note that such an attack can only be executed if the attacker knows all the necessary information about the device they want to impersonate, and also whether they can bypass the security checks done by the target device or not. Next up we have the human interface device, or an HID spoofing attack. Now while this attack is also kind of similar to a Bluetooth impersonation attack, where an attacker essentially spoofs their device to mimic something it's not, the key difference here is instead of mimicking a trusted device, the attacker uses a device like the multi-blue dongle to mimic a Bluetooth keyboard, and tricks the target device into thinking it's connecting to a legitimate keyboard. Doing this allows an attacker to remotely control the targeted device and execute malicious commands on it, all while staying under the radar. Number 4 on our list is a Bluetooth interception attack. Here an attacker basically places themselves in between two communicating devices using a tool like Ubertooth 1, and then sniffs or captures the traffic between them using Wireshark. Now the reason why I've included a heartbeat sensor here, instead of using another smartphone or laptop, is because this attack is usually done on devices that use something called BLE or Bluetooth Low Energy Technology, and if I kept a device that used classical Bluetooth here, an attacker would need to use a much high-end device like the Bluetooth Elysis Explorer, in order to sniff their traffic effectively. Finally, we have the Blueborn attack. Now while this attack doesn't necessarily fit in the broadly applicable category, and targets a specific vulnerability that many newer operating systems may have patched, the reason why I'm including it here is because many IoT devices, car infotainment systems, and medical appliances, still operate on older versions that haven't received these patches, and if an attacker comes across one of these devices, they can easily take complete control over that device, without requiring it to be in discoverable mode or engaging in the pairing process. This is basically made possible through various hacking tools and scanners that are developed to scan for a specific vulnerability in nearby devices, and if you're interested in learning more, you can download the PDF that I mentioned earlier by clicking on the link in the description down below. Stage number 2, Bluetooth Hacking Tools Transitioning to the next phase of our discussion, if we quickly go through some of the Bluetooth hacking tools we have available within Linux, the first one on our list is called Spooftooth. Spooftooth is a tool that comes pre-installed on Kali Linux, and is used for spoofing Bluetooth devices. Like all the other hacking tools on our list, it's also designed to be used within a command line interface, and can perform things like spoofing a device name, its unique Bluetooth address, or class. VT Scanner is another useful tool to extract valuable information from a device without needing to be paired with it, while Redfang is a tool used to discover hidden Bluetooth devices. Moving on, Blue Ranger tells us the approximate location or range of nearby devices, and tools like BetterCap, BTLE Juice, or BTLE Jack, are used to perform perform various attacks on Bluetooth low energy devices. Apart from these, many Linux distributions also come equipped with a bunch of utilities that are widely used for managing and ultimately hacking Bluetooth devices, so if you're interested in learning about them, you can check out this documentation by clicking on the link in the description down below. Anyway guys so that's it for the video, before ending, I'd like to mention that while the hacking techniques I mentioned are broadly applicable and can be done on most devices, you should know that their effectiveness and complexity still comes down to the Bluetooth security mode that is being used, and also the technical expertise a person has. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below, and I'll see you in the next one.